Hey, what's up everyone? Mecca here. Welcome to tier list review where I go over my big tier lists, certain parts of it, and I look at them, how accurate they are. I can't really do that myself though. I brought someone with me that knows way, way, way too much about this Sophie, uh, tiering, <laughs> metagame, etc. And that's P. Thadias. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, um, as you said, I am way too involved in this game. Uh, most of it is true osmosis. I just hang out in a Discord that has basically every single LTC here for SOV minus Rangor. So I just sort of pick up on this stuff. Uh, there's even a meme in uh, in your patron chat uh, about me talking about the SOV meta way too much. And if anyone watches your streams, they'll probably have seen me pick a fight with someone saying Clive is bad in the chat. Probably. Or they've been on Twitter or the YouTube comment section somewhere. <laughs> It just it just kind of happens. Or the subreddit. Yeah, or just or everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. So, P, if you specialize, I don't want to. I want to say you specialize in SOV optimization. I would say so, like kind of uh, LTC efficiency kind of stuff. And this tier list is, uh, of course, right. Yeah, like, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Um, I, I've done an LTC up to Act Four of Celica side. Mm -hmm. I haven't finished Om side though. Mm -hmm. um, or the tower, because you leave the tower until after Alm uh, does Nui Baba anyways. Yeah. But um, otherwise, I mostly play for efficiency. Yeah, I, I usually ar get around 200 turns. Yeah, and when you say efficiency, is it right to say what you mean is not really LTC, but I don't stick around forever, I don't grind, I play at a fast pace, basically, right? Um, I do play at a fast pace. Uh, when it comes to grinding, uh, SLV is a bit of a weird case where sometimes grinding makes the game actually faster in terms of turn counts. Uh, I'll talk about that when I get when we get to Python on this list, which is probably going to be uh, in the second part. Um, but in general, you don't like grind for 20 turns or whatever. It's pretty fast stuff to reach very specific goals that will save you time later. Yeah, so in short, you... You do encounters when that saves you more turns than it costs, and otherwise you try to avoid them, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good to know. And because what I think is important for this kind of discussion, for this kind of tier list review, is of course a tier list like this has to be based in efficiency of some kind. If you stick around for 100 turns grinding everyone, then almost everyone is going to be stuck at a high tier, or like roughly equivalent. There has to be some way to di differentiate units, but I do think it's nice to point out whenever possible that a certain strategy, a certain unit, a certain way of using a unit is applicable to playing the game normally because I find that there's a lot of overlap between what is a good strategy in a faster playthrough beside, um, compared to what is a good strategy in what would say casual gameplay or normal gameplay or whatever you want to say. Um, so I've generally found out, for example, uh, to pick like a really obvious one. Uh, Leon, using Leon a lot in Seleka route, giving him a killable early on, having him obliterate everything, everything in his way. That is not just something that's really good uh, when you're trying to get a low turn count, or when you're trying to be efficient, or when you just want to speedrun the game or whatever, if we're going to bring that up. But it's also just, it's, um, how to put it, it's just a good strategy. It works in every setting. Uh, and that's what I've generally found these strategies to be really helpful for. There might also be strategies coming up every now and then that are only applicable to low turn counting, or... Uh, uh, efficiency playthroughs, uh, so it'd be cool to like distinguish between that every now and then when it's like really applicable. But generally, I find that there's a big overlap. Do you find that as well? Uh, yeah. So the Leon example is a really good one, and another good one would be doing the super mage strat, which I guess I'll talk about fairly soon, or you know, killer bomb over royal sword. It's just just because it's used for LTC doesn't mean you can't use it yourself, because generally, a fast strategy that you just play slowly. Is going to be better than a slow strategy that you play slowly. That's fair. That's fair. And then um, there, there was like one more, one or two more things I wanted to bring. Oh right, uh, you don't have to play that way. Of course, it's just generally good advice that you could take or you know leave aside if you want to be more. Um, mm -hmm. I guess you mentioned uh, the multiple parts thing. Or was there something you need to add to that before we go on? Uh, yeah. Um, Another thing I just want to bring up about SOV uh, meta specifically is when a lot of people think about meta games, they'll think about it in the sense of like a competitive game or a very strict game where deviating from the meta is seen as a, a bad thing. But the thing about the SOV meta that I find so interesting is how uh, free it is. Once you know what's good, it's really easy to deviate from that because you know why it's good and you're able to do funny strats uh, based on that. There's like five viable carries for Celica side, for instance. 
Yeah, when you say character, what you mean is uh, a character that gets most of the resources, most of the XP, and does most of the battling for the for the route, right? Like they take on the toughest parts of the of a given uh, chapter. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so you mentioned there might be multiple parts. That's because we can talk about this for hours and hours, especially you. And then I could probably <laughs> fire questions at you for another hour if we need to. Uh, so this is the first part, and there might be more as well. I know I did Don Don's. Don and I did FE10 in two or three parts, and we did FE12 in two parts. Uh, this one might be three, might be four, might be two, I don't know yet. We'll see when we get there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to focus on Selica Route first because you said you had some interesting takes on Pala and Katria, the, the Pegasus Knights on that side, because I put them in S plus as like the best of the mm -hmm. best. And apparently, uh, I, I've played FSOV somewhat recently, and I've seen some reasons not to, but I'm really interested in why you think they're, I don't, I don't want to say bad, even though I, I Sometimes I hear Pala bad. I hear that a lot somehow lately. Yeah, so Wide Wings bad is, I mean, I'll say it for clickbait, but in reality, it's more like the White Wings are severely overrated by the community. Uh, and Est, unironically, is uh, severely underrated. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. The first one is that uh, back in the day, we did Super Pala, which is what you did in your Let's Play. Yeah. Uh, where you give uh, Pala a level, you backtrack, you give her three XP boosters, and she promotes. Now, why is this bad? That's One, sort of back you have three, to right? fight... When you get her. Uh, like, right, uh, right away. After you get Atlas. Yeah. Because you need her to get a level first, so you do oh, yeah. the, the graveyard. Oh, yeah, yeah. you go so back to promote Atlas is... as well. Right, right. Yeah, sorry. We, yes. Please carry on. So... So, why is this bad? There's a few reasons. One, you're gonna fight more map spawns, especially if you did on site first, which you should for reasons we'll talk about when we get to Leon. Um, why is fighting more map spawns bad? It isn't necessarily because it can make your EXP uh, better, but the map spawns from Greed Citadel aren't worth that much EXP in the first place, compared to the ones from, um, from Mila Temple. And even if you could use that EXP, it, it, it's still a turn penalty to using Super Pala, which uh, using May as your carry, in, for instance, uh, does not. Uh, now, let's pretend for a second that that's not a problem. You don't care about the turns, you just want the you know big, strong Pegasus Knight. She's still not that good. She actually loses the 1v1 versus the Mercenary in Desert Fort at Falcon Knight bases with a Silver Lance plus 3. Oh, is that the guy you fight uh, with Selvar she... usually? Uh, no, that's the one in Greet. I mean, uh, the dudes hanging out in front of the Beaufort. Oh, uh, I remember those, yeah. yeah. They're annoying. They're annoying. It, in that chapter, it feels like Pala and Katria are like, they fly over the desert, right? So they're good in that portion. But generally, I find mm -hmm. when they get to the fort, they attack a couple times and they gotta get back and get healed because they just can't handle the fort at all. Yeah, and that was the logic for why we did it. It's just n no one at the time stopped to ask, Hang on, do I have a better unit to fight archers than a bunch of flyers? <laughs> well, I think the idea with Super uh, Palace specifically was that you inflate her stats so much that she can fight archers. And I did find that she can one round a lot of the archers generally. It's just not always safe for her to do so because the steel bows, especially the boss, just kind of wreck her. Especially if she can get crit, mm -hmm. which sometimes it might happen. Well, uh, the, the steel bow's only on the boss. The regular ones have iron bows, which have six might versus flyers. Oh, so yeah, she gets something like four or five hit KO'd. But it's four or five hit KO'd by enemies of which are like six. And also, she does not counter them, so she's not actually doing anything outside of player phase. And then the enemy she does counter, the uh, mercenary, as I said, she loses the 1v1 to him. Uh, he does like 12 damage to her. She has 35 HP. Uh, and she does something like 10 damage, while he has like 32 HP. So she she gets tree rounded, and he tree rounds her. Uh, and if you're baiting him on enemy phase, then he's gonna get the first hit in, and she's gonna lose the uh, 1v1. And if you're not baiting him on enemy phase, then she still loses because she's too far in, and she's getting killed by the archers. Yeah. So. So she's. And this is what Falconite is, right? She's just super inadequate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is Falconite. Yeah. With a Forge, too. Damn. Um, and then the second map we did Super Pala for was Great Citadel. So how does she do there? Well, she will one round the Snipers, and she will one round the Arcanas. I don't know how she does against the Brigands, but that's not super relevant because someone else fights them, usually. Um, 
but she takes a lot of damage, right? So sh she's not super great there either. And, like, yeah, she's gonna be better in base Pala, but you invested so much to get such little return, uh, including fighting the map spawns. So that's Pala if you do super Pala. If you don't, she's still disappointing, um, because she misses offensive benchmarks in Act 4, has bad EXP gain in Act 3, and, uh, like, her speed is so bad. <laughs> it is so bad. I mean, you only need one, I guess, like, over the enemy to double, right? So, but I'm, I'm assuming she doesn't double yeah. fast sorties, because those are just generally fast, but I guess, I think from memory, she probably doesn't double gargoyles, which is another kind of fast yeah. enemy type, which is kind of annoying. But that's an important one, though, because yeah. for Deadman's Mire, uh, which is 4 1, uh, the Cantor on the top summons a bunch of gargoyles. And if you compare her to Catria or a 12 1 S, as an example, which is less silly than it sounds, uh, they both have like 15 16 speed, and they double the gargoyles and will one round them. Which uh, then allows them to, you know, go in for the kill while yeah. Palo would body blocked. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, to go back to the Super Leon comparison for a moment, because obviously that's something. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, I was discussing something like this with Rangor, and he will bring up, well, uh, you can do both Super Leon and Super Pala. Like, they don't, uh, mm -hmm. the investments that you need to give them don't overlap. What do you think about that? That's true, but the investment that Super Pala requires overlaps with other units, uh, namely uh, Mei, Bowie, Celica, or Saber, one of the four. Uh, you can only pick one, but you know, one of those four. Uh, that would end up in a more useful unit than Pala in Act 3. Uh, I can talk about why a bit more in details yeah. when we get to them. Yeah, sure. But, Re like A real quick question that comes up to me though is, uh, don't you mostly invest into those during Act 2 when Pala doesn't exist, or do you need more investment in Part 3 that they compete with um, Pala with? It's not that they compete with pa Part 3 investments, it's that they compete with her for set boosters, mm. uh, namely the XP boosters. Okay, that makes sense. Because they need XP boosters to get to certain benchmarks, promotions, etc. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Now, um, before we move Pala anywhere, because um, personally, I would move her right next to Catria. I uh, uh, want to talk about Catria first. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Uh, Catria's got a three-level disadvantage uh, over Pala, but she has uh, one like huge advantage, which is that her res is exists. really good. <laughs> it exists. <It's, laughs> well, Pala's exists. It's five. That's not that bad for SOV, right? True. But it's it's worse, and you fight a lot of mages on Selkarath, especially if you do the Sonya map. Um, now, why is this relevant? Well, witches give a metric ton of EXP, and base Catria one rounds witches at base level if you forge her a javelin plus two. Yeah, she so survives that's... three hits. That's uh, like two stars for forging out, right? Like the... uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's like, I forgot how much money it costs, either 75 or 140, one of the two. But you can't afford it. Like, you can forge what you need and afford the javelin. It's uh, the money's not an issue for getting it to her. And it's going to be useful later on anyways, because that way you can use it in uh, Jetta Swamp versus the Fiends. Um, anyways, uh, the, the thing is, the Witches give a ton of EXP, and the map is roughly a 3-turn minimum anyways, uh, because the way you low-turn that map, and I, I know this isn't just about low-turn, but that's still the turn floor, right? Yeah. Is that... You kill Sonya and then you retreat, because once uh, Sonya <laughs> is dead, uh, Dean will actually leave the top and you don't have to fight him, so you can backtrack to the top and go around Sonya. Oh, so do you just not fight the other uh, guys around uh, here? Yeah, yeah, which in a casual run, don't do that, just kill the other witches, right? Um, but if you're talking about turn sufficiency, uh, you would kill Sonya with Leon, and then you'd leave and go around. Uh, side note, if you're the kind of player that likes to grind, you can actually kill all the witches except Sonya, leave, and then go fight Dean. Uh-huh. So when you say you kill Sonya and then you retreat, and this might be clear to other people, but not to me, um, does that mean you do or do you not get the kills on Catria for the other witches? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 you... 
you would kill the other witches. It's just that there's a turn floor on the map, so Catria has time to kill the witches while you're waiting for the Sonya kill. Okay. And that's basically free EXP for her. Okay. Uh, why can't Fala do this? Her, her res is garbage. <laughs> so, like, that's about it, right? Yeah, she uh, dies. So Catria will actually... Yeah, she... yeah um, I think she takes, like, two witches, and that's just... Two is smaller than three, I'm afraid. <laughs> I guess you, I guess you could give them to her. It's just Catria takes them better. And at, at the end of the day, as much as I have my issues with Pala, um, you still want two Falco Knights because they make each other better. No Falco Knight is going to be able to one round in late Act Four, but if you have two of them, they can combine to kill an enemy. And since they're both flyers and they also literally support each other, you're going to be able to. Uh, get combined kills with Pal and Catria. So, it, ideally, even if you wanted to give the kills to Pala, I, I'd suggest giving them to Catria so that you get two Falco Knights promoted by making Catria catch up. Okay, so even though you, you move them down, they're still part of a puzzle of an efficient playthrough, basically. Uh, yeah, because there's some enemies that are just a bit too far out of reach to kill quickly uh, with your other units. And uh, at the end of the day, some of that EXP is basically free, right? Like, who are you going to enemy face the witches with, right? Leon's not going to reach in time, so you throw Catria at them. Yeah. You might as well. Yeah, if no one's competing for it, it's free uh, It's free bargains. It's free cookies. It's free, yep. free brownies. There you go. So, mm -hmm. I know nothing else has been moved to the correct position yet, but where would you roughly put him? Like, I was, from the sound um, of the description, it sounds like B plus or something? A minus? Yeah, for me, it's like lower B plus is where I'd put them. Damn. All right, we'll just, we'll just plop him there for now. I'm gonna, but like, all these units are probably going to be discussed somewhere, so I'll just put him here for now and mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, I would also I would also personally put Catria over Pala. Oh yeah. Um, the re the res is better later on. The level advantage is negated if you account for the fact that Pala gets like no EXP in the the Sonya map, but Catria does. Uh, and in Act Four, uh, Catria is going to be able to double gargoyles, which Pala cannot do. And Pala misses the the one shot threshold by literally one attack. So, <laughs> and that's after EXP boosters for Agra. Or, not EXP, um, that's after the attack boosters from Mila Temple. She <laughs> still misses the threshold. No rip. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess she could hit it with like a plus five silver, but there's issues with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. You don't have which, infinite gold, you have enough for yeah. some stuff, I think. Which, uh, speaking of, now I think about it, uh, I was almost forgetting. Uh, that's the other thing that Falcon Knights are really important for. Uh, you can one turn the Necro Dragon map if you have uh, at least one Falco Knight, and they need uh, 17 attack. Or sorry, they need 27 attack, which is either 17 with a plus three. Uh, plus three has 10 might, so you reach 27, vanish 37, one round the Necro Dragons, or uh, 15 attack with a plus five, which is the more likely one because Katri averages 13 attack and Pala averages 14 attack, so you can give them a booster to make it the rest of the way. Mm hmm. And just for clarification, uh, it's average, averages are not like the, the best predictor of the unit's stats, but I find in SOV, these kinds of strategies that are usually thought out in advance like this, they generally work out because units promote up to their class basis of their new promoted class. So mm -hmm. it's uh, the variance is lower than in most other games because your pre-promotion level ups matter less, I feel like. Is that your experience as well? Yeah. Uh, sort of. Some pre-promotion level ups matter a lot, some don't. If you're already above the class basis, it'll matter a lot. Uh, a good example of that is, although we're not talking about that side yet, uh, Soldier Tobin. Uh, that, that's a hot take to look forward to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> because he's above the class base for even Baron, so every speed level he gets matters, n no matter what. Mm -hmm. Um... Anyways, uh, the, but the other thing to keep in mind is if they don't reach that magical number of 15 attack with a plus 5 silver, uh, they don't do anything, right? Like, you either go for it, and if if you don't get it, well, it sucks to be you, I guess. You're getting a 2 turn. Um, Which, I mean, is still pretty good in the context it. of this tier list, right? If you get a 2 turn instead of a Yeah, one yeah. Th like, that's still pretty good, but my point is, if you don't go for it, what else are you doing? Like, they're your only option for it. If you don't reach it, too bad. But most of the time, at least one of the two is going to reach it. Getting two units that are screwing on attack is a little unlikely. Yeah, that way you can hedge your bets. I, kinda, I like that philosophy a lot. 
Um, so yeah. uh, I know we were saying we were going to do mostly Celica route today, uh, but it looks uh -huh. a little awkward now with an empty S plus and an S minus. Uh -huh. We talked before the recording uh -huh. that we actually want to abolish uh, the plus minus part of the S tier and just kind of make one and just put units that are really yep. good in there. So I'm going to nuke this one. It's fixed. It looks totally good now. Okay. You were saying um, something. Real quick. Yes, there's another thing I forgot to talk about with the White Wings. Pala and Catria have an unfortunate disadvantage over Est. Uh, this <laughs> oh, is no. going to be like the hottest take, but you should use Est for her bases. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh no. Um, Est has 12 base resistance, which is actually insane. I think it's the highest in the game except the priests, like Jenny and Silk. Um, maybe Nelma? Uh, either way, it's... Oh, and Tatiana. Um, it, like, it's really insane. And this means that, on average, 12-5 uh, Est will survive two very specific enemies that Katria and Pala don't survive. Um, she survives the combination of a Javelin Baron, well, Fiend, and a Death Arcanist in Doomagate, which Pala and Katria both die to if they don't get a dodge. Uh, or a heal in between. This sounds too now, This sounds so specific to, that it can't be important to me. You know that, right? Well, so what I'm trying to get at with that is that I'm not trying to say she's better than Pal and Catria. They have better availability and they do take less investment. But it is something unique to her uh, that's actually pretty useful. Um, and outside of that. Uh, it's actually not that much effort to get her to promotion. Uh, keep in mind that when we're talking about Super Pala, there's like, or Pala promoting in general, really, there's like this uh, unspoken assumption that it's fine for her to get three XP boosters. But if it's fine for her to get three XP boosters, why isn't it fine for Est to get three XP boosters, right? And at yeah. that point, you only have to get Est from three to nine, which is six levels where she's getting accelerated EXP gain because she's underleveled. Yeah, so the moment you recruit Est, you're saying, uh, which is, I think, a Grief Citadel is where you get her, right? I think it is. It. Yeah, and then you backtrack to the same way you would do for Pala before you move on, um, I guess. Not quite. Not quite, actually. Um, what I'd do, if I was trying to use Est, and to be clear, I'm not saying in an efficient run you would use Est over Pala and Catria. I'm saying it's something she can do, because I'm trying to argue her out of D tier. Uh -huh. She's not going to reach B+, but I want to argue her out of D tier. Okay. Um, what you would do is you'd, you'd play as normal in Act 3, except the feeding ass fart. She actually has really decent attack at base if you give her the silver that Pal has been using up to now. Um, or just the silver in general. Mom says it's right? my turn with the silver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you're gonna fight map spawns, because while map spawns are bad, you're not avoiding them unless you're rigging, or playing with a patch that disables them. And there's enough map spawns uh, and maps with weak enemies that she can, like, prey on, like the Arcanists in, um... Is it called Valley Approach? Yeah, Valley Approach, yeah. I think. I remember um, that name, so it must be the right one. It's the one before Mila Temple. There, there's enough Arcanists and Witches in there uh, that S can actually get kills pretty decently, because she's not that slow, and... Well, more accurately, the enemies are really slow, and... As I said, she has bonkers res uh, resistance, <laughs> and they give a lot of EXP. So it's not that unreasonable to get her to level 9, at which point you give her the EXP boosters and she promotes. Uh, but the backtrack is not going to cost her additional turns, uh, because uh, you can effectively uh, do it at the start of Act 4. Map spawns are not enabled in Act 4 until you actually play an Act 4 map. So you can backtrack to Seabound without fighting any encounters, promote and walk back to the start of Act 4 without having fought an encounter. Oh yeah, I do really like that. Be like between acts you get like a brief period where you can just do anything on the maps that you have forgotten with like quests and everything. Like yeah, that. and it also disables uh, stuff like the graveyard encounters in Celica route, so oh. you don't have to fight them again. Stupid ass zombie next to that town where Atlas comes from, I think. <laughs> I hate that guy. He's yes, there. Stupid that one. Okay. Y you fight him so mm -hmm. many times. Yeah. I have, now, I have one big issue, though, with moving S out of D tier. Mm -hmm. my, my C tier is full. <laughs> I mess up the aesthetics again if I move so much. Uh, if you <laughs> I'll probably move, move him down for a second. There you go. Sure. <laughs> now, why else would I want S in C tier? Now, 
I understand that using Est as your main white wing is a niche, uh, is a niche thing. She is equal to Katria for most of it, because she's fast enough to double the Gargoyles, they have basically the same attack, or, well, she has roughly the same attack as Fala, but it doesn't matter, right? because you'd be... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you'd be giving an attack booster to whoever your main white wing is, right? Mm -hmm. Um... Like, she's gonna be good, but not outstanding, outside of specifically fighting enemy mages in Duma Gate. Now, understand that's niche, so there's more stuff that us can do. Uh, she can use the Sonian, which oh, no. most people have probably never used. I have. It's weird. It's such a weird weapon. It's like a... I think it's like a three-range javelin that doesn't counter at close range. It's, it's, uh, so it's two, three. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't counter at close you range. You can use... Yeah, but that's kind of useful because there's a bunch of enemies with tree range that are over walls in Doomus Gate, so it's actually pretty good on that map, and it's also good to avoid a counter from uh, Javelin Fiends in uh, uh, Jetta Swamp. Uh, so it has some utility as a weapon if you forge it, but more importantly, it has Swap attached to it. And that's very nice, because you only get one letter shield, so you can have a second Swapper in an uninvested Est, by giving her the letter shield, letting her fight five times, presumably versus map spawns or the graveyard guy, and then she has swap, and when you give her the Sonian and give the letter shield to someone else, she will keep swap. So you have a second swapper. Mm -hmm. I do really like swapping so also, flyers, because they can afford to lose the tiles that they lose with swapping someone else forward like Leon, and they just fly up it's, and make up for it. Yeah, it's really useful to get people across the swamp, especially. Oh yeah, because they had like major terrain penalties. I actually, we played a, yeah. a Soyo draft a while back with a couple of Patreons that Pete and I were both in. And he gave me a bunch of units that he wanted me to try out, I think, like Forsyth. And I think you gave me Est as well. And I did actually use all these strategies, and I can confirm that actually... I mean, it did feel inefficient at some points to use Est, but I could definitely appreciate the value of Sonyon and Swap at times. Not always, like there were mm -hmm. times where I was using uh, Sonyon uh, in a bit of an awkward spot because... Unlike in like GBA, for example, where if you use a javelin or if you use like a, a longbow or something and you want to trade to a killer bow, someone else can do that for you. But with mm -hmm. this game where you only have one weapon in every inventory, that's not always possible or plausible. So someone would end up like not countering an enemy. But I'm sure that if you think out your strategies better than I did, then a Sonyan could come in really handy in several points. Um, if someone wants to see good Sonyan strats, I would recommend looking up the, the Chongler on YouTube. He's an SOV LTC -er, has a really good run. Uh, and he did a challenge where he banned the killer bow, uh, <laughs> just for fun. He hasn't uploaded all of it, but the clear in particular I want to shout out is um, uh, Sluice Gate, which is uh, 3E on on side. Uh, there was some Sonian Matilda action in there to kill Arcanists over a wall. <laughs> That's the one with um, uh, Tatiana. No, uh, Tatiana. Deltia. Deltia, yeah, there you go. Del Better girl. Yep. Other, other damsel distress. All of them. All of them. The the patented uh, Kaga young possessed curl trope. All of them. <laughs> okay, so do you think S should stay at the bottom um, of C or do you want her higher as well? Uh, she's in the bottom of my fully reserved, uh, fully um, revised C tier personally. We okay. can change her around later if we want. Yeah, I But agree I guess that. the TLDR for S is uh, if you invest in her, she can replace one of the white wings or even just join them as a trio. She's not that hard to train. Uh, if you give her the XP boosters like you would Pala, she'll also promote. And even if you don't want to do all of that, I still think she belongs in C tier because of what she can do at base with Sonian and Swap. And even just the support bonuses she gives the White Wings can be nice. Yeah. Plus, you get to try on like try on tech memes if you wanted to, although that's not a big factor. I, <laughs> I, 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 it's I, a factor I, in her training, actually. Oh. <laughs> That's fair enough. I did use it a couple times as a meme. It's surprisingly stupid how often Triangle Attack can be somewhere close to good if you use it. But uh, my my only regret is that this Triangle Attack is not like the guide in Triangle Attack that yeah. can miss and can also trigger on enemy face. <laughs> funny strats. It's always funny when someone says like this character is good if you train her, but for S, I think you've properly backed up that for one, you don't need to train her to get utility out of her, and then two. The resources that she needs are actually like somewhat congruent or like somewhat similar to the ones that Pella yeah. and Catcher consume. Oh, uh, also, I guess I should reiterate: this isn't like an LTC tier list. This is general efficiency, which is super vaguely defined. And SOV is actually uh, so tight that if you allow like one or two extra turns, everything goes out of whack. So if you allow even like five turns for Est, 
like to slow down to train her that's insane like she can promote so easily in that kind of setting mm -hmm. that's good to know because uh, i definitely did slow down maybe even too much for us and i just promoted her like really really quickly but i don't remember i don't remember how efficient i was when i played i know i didn't really care about turn counts so but it didn't mm -hmm. feel super bad it's, like i said like i said yeah. efficiency is very vague but it, it gave me a good idea of how easy it was, I suppose. Um, so there you go. That's that's what like a half hour talk just about white wings and introductions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go. Well, the white wings are interesting. What can I say? Yeah. You know what? Let's get an easy one out of the way then. Oh, yeah. uh, move Silk or not Silk uh, Jenny to S tier. Oh yeah, I absolutely <laughs> agree. Where did I even put her? Oh there she, there she is. Yeah, I mean she's a sheep. It's... What else is there to be said? True, uh, and also I killed uh, Duma with her in my zero percent growth run. Oh wow! You one up me. How dare you? <laughs> uh, I, I actually really liked that kill because it involved the Dreadfighter critting for sixty nine with a sixty nine percent chance to kill and survive uh, to bring Duma to one HP, which is just poetic, really. These are priorities, very big priorities that we're talking about right now. <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, but um. God slaying aside, uh, what's, what's so good about Jenny? Well, you have Juggernauts. Your Juggernauts in Salakarout have shit res, namely Leon. As it turns out, if you have bad res, you get hit for a lot, and if you're dead, you can't Juggernaut. So it's kind of important to have Physic yeah. uh, to keep Leon going. Yeah, I think, especially in this, in the context of SOV, it's such a big deal that units, uh, they need health more than ever because you can't, it's not like GBA games and other games where you just pack a vulnerable or your concoction in your inventory and heal whenever it's convenient. You, like, if you do that, you can't have a killer bow or a silver forge or whatever else you want to, like, you can't have a sonny on if you, if you're, if you want to pack, like, food. <laughs> so someone else needs to keep your HP up and as far as I know in Selecarvout, there's, this is the only really viable way to do that is to have Jenny physicking from distance and keep him healthy. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, I will. Uh, I will say that's not the only thing that's good about her. Uh, if you're a, a an absolute Chad, you can give her the stat boosters at the start of Act Two and do Nosferatu memes. <laughs> not efficient, but very funny. And uh, I'm contractually obligated to say it, otherwise my girlfriend will kill me when she sees this video, because she's a big Jenny fan. It's okay. Just Nosferatu <laughs> your health back. It's fine. You'll be fine. True. 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 Uh, and even outside of memes, uh, when she promotes, she gets Seraphim, and she has a really good magic set, and Fiends are really slow, so she can actually either one round or bring them really close to death with, like, Mage Ring or even Grimoire Ring uh, Seraphim uh, in Duma Tower, especially. So she's got some combat utility there, for, like, for good measure, on top of her really good uh, Physic. Now, uh, I gotta talk about Invoke. I do not like Invoke. <laughs> I know it's very popular in casual runs, but uh, Invoke is like you get your EXP stolen away from you, but like unironically this time. And it, it can also really mess with your strategies if an Invoke soldier uh, goes where you don't want them to. It has its uses, uh, especially in like an Iron Man setting, you can like save a run. Uh, or for the Necro Dragons, since the soldiers will die to the Necro Dragons, I mean the ones in Act 2 at Seabound Shrine, um, you can use them as distractions, since you don't have a lot of good dragon killers at that point. <laughs> but I don't like it generally. No, I can see that. I, I, w I would almost describe Invoke as a get out of jail free card, except there is actually an opportunity cost, um, like the things you said. And mm -hmm. I was just, whenever I was using Invoke accidentally or not, I was really afraid that Jenny would die because her HP would get so low since the spell is so costly. Yeah. There's another big fear I had. <laughs> Usually nothing to worry about because she summons the things around herself, so generally she's fine. And they can't really work against powerful enemies, but uh, when you're playing efficiently, yeah. you generally want the enemies to go for your units that actually kill them on a counterattack, and that's not something that Invoke Soldiers do very well. I have, ha I have once mm -hmm. finished a map with an Invoke Soldier beating an enemy down, though. That was very satisfying. <laughs> but, I mean, even, yeah. if you just, even if you just ignore Invoke and its existence for this tier list, I think she still 100% deserves that spot just based on the other utility she can do. Like, I made a whole video just about how good Jenny was in my Iron Man playthrough, just like a whole compilation. So I'm 100% behind enemy, uh, Jenny memes and also behind her uh, proper utility, I guess we'll call it. She's so, mm -hmm. so good. She doesn't even have warp, but she's still that good. Easy S tier, for sure. I don't know yeah. why she was down there. Um, another thing I'd like to mention about Jenny real quick, and I don't know if you'll want to count this as a contribution because it's, it's kind of spicy. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> invoke rerolls RNs for the purposes of turn wheel. No, that doesn't count. That does not count. <laughs> that's not funny. Well, that's actually very interesting, though, because it means you can reroll uh, without attacking an enemy. It, I'm not saying it counts, but it is very fun utility that everyone mm -hmm. should know about. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you can't use that to rig against Duma because you need her turn. True, true, true. <laughs> but uh, who needs to rig anyways? Nosferatu has a hundred hit rate if you believe hard enough. <laughs> okay, I'm not even gonna respond to that with that true because that's obviously <laughs> not true. But goddamn, okay, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. We'll Take Sonya to boost her Nosferatu hit rate sixty-five. <laughs> SMH SOV. Okay, fair enough. Jenny East. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> Selica route. Who next? Yeah, uh, Leon S tier, I guess? I don't know, man. I mean, he only hits enemies at like 1-5 range for like 25,000 crits. I don't know about that. I, uh, I I asked before we recorded, like, why is Leon not an S tier? And my recent character guide, I think, put him in S tier, at least where he belongs. But I I was like, mm -hmm. why is he down there? And, and as a, Peeve thinks, which is probably true, that he was in there because, for one, I expect my XP really thin between him and Atlas and like other units. And two... I, on my let's play, I played Selica route first in Act 3, and then I did Alm route, um, which means that he didn't have access to the killable during Act 3. Whereas if you play Alm first, you can have Alm forge the killable, and as far as I know, he has more gold and more silver to work with, so he can send over the killable mm -hmm. after he's done with little opportunity cost. And then uh, Leon can have that one at the start of Act 3 and be really good with that, because, you know, Hunter's Volley is really good, and I think lately. It's not just been Hunter's Volley really good, but also Leon fighting an enemy phase is generally better than anyone else fighting an enemy phase. Just look at like Archer Fort, look at like Great Citadel, look at any other map where enemies have more than two range, or even more than one range. He's just your best attacker for the whole route, and 100% worth investing like a Pegasus Cheese to make him double attack. That's, that's Leon also, for you. Yeah, he, he also needs plus one attack. Um, doesn't need need it, but if he gets it, he will... Uh, one round some archers uh, without crits and bow fort, so it's a huge reliability increase. That's fair. I I think mine got lucky when I last played, but you do also have attack boosters to give him right if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, I'd probably put him above the clerics personally. Um, I mean, he does carry by himself, you... so that's fair. <laughs> yeah, because what would you do if you didn't have Jenny, right? You would still use Leon as your carry. It, it just would be slower because you'd need to sometimes bring him back to use a regular recover instead. Yeah. Um... But if you didn't have Leon, you know, you, I feel like not having Leon, you'd feel it more than not having Jenny. Yeah, I could see def definitely. So I'll, I'll put him here for sure, or like um... below Silcano. Doesn't really matter to me right now. Uh, and that said, uh, Leon S tier does come with a bit of a caution uh, of a warning. Uh, while he is easily your best enemy phase unit, his res is actually garbage. It's like four. Uh, give him the res boosters and C bound. But even with that, that's six res. That's not that much. And you fight a lot of Arcanus on enemy phase. Now, I'm not trying to talk him out of S tier because he's, he obviously belongs there, if you ask me. But uh, just be really careful when you use him. Uh, because he gets like three hit KO or something if he doesn't dodge. Yeah, and he's probably the champion of suffering from success if you don't, you're not careful. Because uh, he does kill everything that touches yep. him after he gets uh, after he doubles and gets cut up. That's absolutely true. He's not like Har who just like flies in there and kills something. He's S tier in a different way. Like mm -hmm. there isn't really anyone else that can replicate what he does and also have more bulk. So he's really all you got. Mm -hmm. But you do have to minimize his exposure a bit. Well, there is, but it's really cursed. It's uh, Salica Route Cliff. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> oh, uh, but, uh, that and I am <laughs> not advocating for that. I am not advocating for that. That requires a ton of grinding, but I did it once in a draft because I didn't have Leon, and it was really funny. I think I did that exact thing in, a, in the Soyo that we just mentioned. I, I think I suggested it to you. <laughs> yeah, because I think I got Archer Cliff, and I already had done that for Let's Play, so I just went with... Uh, I just, mm -hmm. I just left it behind in Ram Village. I picked him up with Celica later and grinded him up. <laughs> it was a, it was a right. to just have uh... Leon as the only person who had, because like we banned Leon, I think. <laughs> in the Soyo, we banned Leon because he was the last pick, because no one was uh, dumb enough to oh, give Leon right. to someone else. In the Soyo. We soft banned him. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh... Anyway. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, is it, uh, who, is it Merc time? Who's next? It could be Merc time, it could be Mage time. What do you want to do first? Oh, they're both so interesting. Uh, we've been going for 40 minutes. I'm not... 
Do we have more to talk about beyond those two things? Do we need another Celica episode after this, um, do you think? I, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, well, let's just let's get rolling with the Merc. Uh, let's make it Merc time, because they're in it. This one's okay. easier. Uh, and this one, too. In that case, I'll start with Dean, because he's the easiest one. Oh, right. uh, Dean stays right where he is. <laughs> uh, what's his biggest advantage? Um, <laughs> I just want to explain why. Um, the biggest advantage with Dean is related to the mages. Uh, when you use Mei as your carry, she eats up all of the EXP because she needs a lot of EXP to promote. And then in Act uh, in Act 3, she is so good that it actually kind of works against you. Because you want her to fight everything, but then no one else is getting EXP. And that's where Dean comes in. He comes in at level 5 promoted. So he comes in at a higher level than your Saber will be. Because again, he's not getting any EXP. Um, and you're able to get him to Dreadfighter. And that's very important because you need at least one Dreadfighter for an efficient Act 4 to kill enemy Dreadfighters. So that's that's why he belongs in B tier. He's got an availability problem, but in May focused runs, he's insane. He's also not that bad as a filler unit. I agree. It works out for me. That's kind of been my experience with him. I did find like for a unit that's supposed to be low resources, I was still kind of annoyed at having to get him from five to ten. That felt like a very slow process. But mm -hmm. it's still less investment than most units need anyway. So in relative terms, yeah. he's almost like Pence, but not really. <laughs> He, he does require some uh, favoritism to reach it. He might even require EXP boosters, depending yeah. on how fast you're playing. A lot of the time, um, I think at least two or three times, I've been in Act th like around Act 4 start-ish or something, and I'd find the XP Fountain, and Dean would be like a perfect candidate for it. He'd be like right at level 9. That's been my experience with yeah. him. Uh, don't forget there's also an extra speed or uh, an extra speed booster you can get. Uh, at the start of Act 4, you can do the Fugue Shield quest, which gives you uh, a, um, a Golden Apple. Oh, right, for XP, yeah. Yeah, so there's 60 XP boosters total in um, Salka Route. Good. Uh, so that's Dean. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess let's talk about Saber first. Ah, because yes, your favorite. I, <laughs> I have thoughts about Kamui, but they're related to Saber. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Saber at home. So Saber's actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> except not really. Uh, so Saber is actually really interesting because he, he's gone through like such a journey in uh, in the SOV, uh, for lack of a better term, the SOV Discord. Uh, he's gone from, oh my god, casuals are overrating the hell out of him, to, oh my god, I hate Saber so much, why are you not promoted yet? To, oh my god, Saber is good in Bowie runs, I guess, but I hate Bowie, so I'm going to use May and not use Saber. <laughs> uh, that's a shout Karma right there. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, if Karma, this is a, a call out post, finish your 0% growth LTC. <laughs> Ooh, got him. <laughs> um, and uh, from there, it turns out, uh, and speaking of Karma, she's the one that came off of the strat as far as I'm aware. Um, so, what you can do is you can get Saber to level 7 before 2E uh, yeah. by giving him a decent amount of. Favoritism. Yeah, not Tui, like just to clarify, Tui is the map where you only have Celica and uh, Saber to fight with, right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, uh, not like hyper favoritism, but you do need to focus on him a little. And what you do is you promote him at Deliverance HQ or Ram, uh, whatever the team side out is. Yeah, uh, actually, I think it's literally called team side out. Shrine, Anyways, yeah, yeah um, you promote him there. And then you do Tui. Tui will give you something like two levels, uh, killing um, maybe a couple Arcanists and the uh, Cantor. And after that, uh, you have him kill a bunch of enemies in 3 1. And more importantly, he's going to fight map spawns. Now, map spawns are bad, but you can't avoid them. And because you do on site first these days, there's going to be a bunch that have already spawned by the time you get to Selica's side. And with map spawns and the graveyard from um, from the Atlas Village, he's going to reach level 7. Why is that important? Well, you have 3 levels worth of EXP booster, so you do the Super Pala backtrack. Why is it okay for Saber, but not for Pala? Because you actually get a good unit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, what does Super Saber get you exactly? Well, he has 18 speed at base, and he has 24 attack at base with a plus one silver sword. Plus one silver sword is 
actually cheaper than the Forge Pala gets, by the way. Uh, so, I remember it's the, not that the Forge Silver went through a different uh, journey as Saber himself, where people were like, yo, it's good, and, and Roundhouse good, and then went through um, Silver's are bad, actually, get Brave Sword or get yeah. the other things, and then went back to Silver um, good. So in this case, uh, Silver is actually really funny. Uh, I'm just gonna go on the sidetrack real quick. Silver is really funny because if you um, if you use it versus Dreads in Act Four, you're not likely to double them. But because you're promoting Saber to Dread Fighter so early, he actually has a chance to double with Silver. And if he reaches enough attack to one round with Silver, which is unlikely, but like dream Saber scenario, it's actually okay to stay with the Silver and just two shots the Dreads instead of critting them. <laughs> uh, which is really funny, but it's possible, because he's getting so many more levels. And if you do that, it's okay to use the the, the roundhouse on Jetto. Uh, most of the time, though, you're going to want to sell it to use a Brave Sword instead, because hit plus crit is much more reliable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jetto has some, uh, some um, benchmarks to reach. Yeah, but... Anyways, so, so what does this look like? He has 24 attack and 18 speed. What does this do? Well, it one rounds the annoying Myrmidons, or mercenaries rather, that Pala gets or loses the 1v1 against in Beaufort. This is just a Pala another... ghost video, isn't it? Yes. Uh, another thing is he actually has better bulk than Leon. And this is very important because SOVI is kind of sort of similar to FE12 AI, where they tr pr prefer going for damage over survival. Um, so Saber can kill the mercenaries without messing with Leon's chance to counter enemies. <laughs> uh, you'd still want to move him out of there at the end, but like that's something you can do. It also gives him better desert movement, uh, I believe. I need to check to make sure. I know it gives him better swamp movement. Desert, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, uh, regardless, it's a very good ad uh, advantage, right? Because <laughs> it means that um, you can get to enemies faster. Um, now, I haven't run this strat myself, because it's a fairly recent development, and I haven't played SOV in the meantime. But going off of Karma's turn counts, with what she was able to accomplish with Super Saber, um, she got a 4 turn of Beaufort, uh, which normally that's like a 5 turn, unless you hyper rig it or do some really silly stuff like recruiting Cliff on Salika's site to get a deployment slot in the middle of the desert. <laughs> um, uh, so that's a really good thing, and it was also easy to get there, uh, allegedly. And uh, on Greet Citadel, she got like a five turn, which is insanely fast. Like, I think my best turn count on there is eight. Mm, damn. Uh, because again, he has so much movement. Like, Dreadfighters have seven move. That's one less than like a, a Cav in most games, right? Yeah, Dread Fighters are threats. So just, just to be clear here, this is Saber and Leon working in tandem, right? For that kind of yes. stuff. Yes. Because you do need Leon's yeah, yeah. range at some point. Yeah, well, they don't compete with each other. Yeah. Uh, he competes with the mage. Now, uh, speaking of the mage, uh, in a Saber run, you would still use the mage. They just don't get the EXP boosters. Uh, they still carry Act 2 like they normally would. Mm -hmm. And then they maybe promote for Act 4. Um... Uh, from again from Karma's notes, they'll need stat boosters to, or EXP boosters to promote, but that's okay because you don't need them for Dean anymore because you already have a Dread Fighter, um, and uh, your uh, Mage can then be your Jetta killer because you're ditching the Silver Sword. Yeah, that makes sense because the Mage can pierce Jetta. I think he's holding like a Draco Shield, which gives him more depth. He's than holding his. a Draco Shield. Uh, base basically the. Um, the thing is that both mages have really high might spells and aura, Sagitte, and if you're spicy and using Zelika, uh, Ragnarok, um, which will do something like 10 damage or something uh, to Jetta. And the idea is that you can get high enough attack to get a hit plus crit. Hmm. That makes sense. Which, uh, to be clear, that's less reliable than a roundhouse kill, uh, but it is still a turn save, and you have enough turn wheels to make it reliable. You know, brute force the RNG. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's like super saver. And that's already a good enough reason to leave him in A plus for me. Although personally, you wouldn't be top of A plus, but that's because of changes that are gonna come when we do all route. Yeah, it's kind of hard to change him so relative to where he is when you have to talk yeah, about the other so, guys here. So it's fine to leave him there for now. Um, 
And what if you're not doing Super Saber because you want to do a different unit? He's really good in Bowie playthroughs because he's going to be something like level 8 after Greet, which is higher than Dean. So in a Bowie run, because Bowie is less HP hungry than Mei, uh, Saber will be your Dread Fighter for Act 4, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why he's there. Now let's talk about Kamui. Why is Kamui so bad if he's kind of similar-ish to Saber? He doesn't get 2e for one, so he has less HP opportunities. He doesn't get the early maps. Availability matters. And also, he has bad luck. And uh, I believe lower skill as well. Uh, actually, let me check that just to make sure I'm not uh, talking out of my ass. Well, yeah, he has worse luck. He has four less luck and the same growth. And four less skill and the same growth. But uh, they usually will both get boosted to class bases for skill. So that part doesn't really matter as much. The luck is the big one, though. Because enemy dreads will have crit on you, and um, with the difference in luck, what's probably going to happen is that Kamui is just a less reliable saver, ever so slightly. But, you know, those things that add up, especially in hybrid RN. Well, less reliable uh, and more XP hungry, right? Because in multiple ways, he's yeah. becoming a saver in level. Because, uh, like you said, he loses availability, has a lower base level, and he like has a chapter later on that he's not in. So it's just... Worse in more ways than one, I guess you could say. Um, he's actually a higher base level, but Saber will be a higher level by the time oh, he joins. Oh, okay. I forgot his base levels. Uh, it's one and three, respectively. Ah, uh, okay. So, that's not, uh, okay. so yeah. Uh, he's also less bulky. So, he's like, he's already worse than Saber in every way. He can't do super commonly. He literally doesn't have the XP to do it because he doesn't get 2e. Um... He has less availability, he's less reliable, um, there's, there's nothing really that stands out about him. Like, in, if I had to like say which unit is the most pointless in the game, I'd say it's Kamui, but... That's fair, I mean... Unfortunately, it, that's not a rating, right? No, because not really. if you were to use him, he's still gonna be usable, he's still gonna be a Dreadfighter in Act 4, he's just not as good as Saber. So... Yeah, I would personally move him to like B minus. Yeah, within this context, I feel like there's, there's multiple different ways to make a unit work in a run. One of them is as a carry, which you demonstrated. Kamui is not nearly as good as being as a saver. Yeah, it would be some kind of flunky that you're not intending to promote, but just kind of using whenever convenience or for like for his early availability. But it doesn't seem like it has a very good ending for him because then he's just gonna drop off like I don't know halfway through Act Two or mm -hmm. somewhere afterwards. He's just not really. I mean, he's not. He's gonna be a worth a deployment slot because you have free deployment slots for the most part. But he's not yep. doing much of anything, probably, if you do it like that. That's so that's basically it. And if you do use him as a main unit, it's just worth Saber in literally every way. It's not like it's not like, like the S and Tala comparison, where at least S has better resistance or something. Kamui is just worse in every single way. Oh yeah, uh, he also has worse rest than Saber, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, so where did you say you would put him, uh, based on like uh, if you did reuse him? I'd, I'd put him in B minus. Oh, that's fair. Um, I'll just. I think you think Salika's better, so I'm just gonna put him below there for now. Yeah, I, I do think Salika's better. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Mercs, uh, I'll gloss over Jesse real quick. I'm not gonna move him, but I will mention that it's really funny that he's like the king of the uh, of the flunkies. You know, the king of the scrub squad. Because if you give him the silver sword that you get in uh, in the forest in Act Four, uh, he will one round the witch at base in Duma Gate. <laughs> so weird. I I think the funniest thing to me about Jesse is usually when you get a literally unleveled unit like this in another game, they'll be unable to use really good weapons because generally on a level unpromoted units like this, mm -hmm. they have like E or D weapon ranks. But SOV just doesn't really do weapon ranks, so you can give him like Dean's Brave Sword or anything else you want. He's suddenly surprisingly capable with it, even though he just has his base stats. And then yeah. the other funny thing about, like, about Jesse is that his luck is like gigantic, which can sometimes come in yeah. handy. The main problem with him is that he was just never promoting to Dreadfighter unless you slow down a ton, but as like King of the Scrub Squad, he has a special place in my heart. Yeah, I, I Bismix really liked him, so I used him anyway. <laughs> mm. So, okay. yeah. That's uh, so that's the Mercs. I guess the Mage is next. Yeah. Um, so, May and Bowie. Um, I think it's worth talking about them together. So, basically, the main difference between them the is that difference? Bowie is... Hey, hey! Got him. That was a good one. Um, 
that Bowie is bulkier, ever so slightly, in the early game. And then uh, Mei has an easier time reaching offensive thresholds. If you get a, a Mei that's like average or even slightly above average, like, she's gonna be the best unit you've ever seen in the series, almost. But Har still exists. Yeah, I do remember and... being really impressed by Mei's ability to just two-shot anything ever with just an action. And to double emotion. everything. Yeah, that too. She was so insanely fast. Like, her level ups were like Jenny level, which is really mm -hmm. saying something. Whereas Bowie, so, I, I remember and, everyone really hating Bowie, as far as I know. The thing about Bowie is that if you're not willing to rig his growths a little, which I assume for the case of this tier list, we're not willing to rig most of them. Nah. Um, unless you're rigging his growths a little, and I do mean a little, right, just to keep him on average. If he misses even a single proc, everything falls apart. Uh, because of the way SOV Retreat AI works, if you're not killing, the enemy is retreating. And if you're a juggernaut and you're not killing, then that means you're leaving a bunch of enemies on low HP instead of killing them. And you're not getting the kills yourself because you're going to need someone else to finish off that enemy. So that's like the biggest disadvantage about Bowie. If he, mis if he misses at least a single growth, he will suck. And you have to rig his first growth uh, by leaving him at like 990 XP after the first map, uh, chipping the pirates with May and then attacking. Because he's actually one attack short with one attack two speed, he needs two speed to double. Uh, he's actually one attack short of one rounding the pirates in the first boat map. So overly specific. So, <laughs> it's so specific. It, it is, but if you're using Bowie as an efficient carry, that's what you need to do. Um, and as I said, if he misses his growth, like if he's just slightly under average, he's awful. Um, on the other hand, he's bulk here, which lets him be a little more aggressive. Uh, and he also requires less EXP than Mei, which is very noteworthy for Saber runs. At the very least for uh, um, for regular Saber runs. Yeah, how does that work again with EXP? Because if I recall, Mei has an EXP boost, but a higher promotion level, and I thought it evened out. But I think at some point you told me it doesn't actually quite even out. Uh, the reason it doesn't quite even out is because of the um, EXP boosters. Um, I don't have to mat for it, like, on hand, but, like, May's slowest CXP gain is in her last, uh, three levels, uh, where, uh, the XP formula really works against her because of the level difference between her and enemies, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and at that point you give her the XP boosters and it doesn't matter anymore because the XP boosters will always level you up no matter what. But with Bowie, um, his EXP curve is... Like, it's less lopsided, so to speak, because he's not going to be as over-leveled over the enemies, but he gains less EXP overall. Okay. Uh, either way, they will both promote by the end of Act 2, so it's not that much of a concern. Uh, the bigger concern is that Mei in Act 3 is so strong that Saber doesn't get it to, like time to train himself. Yeah, Saber suffering from her success, unfortunately. Basically, yeah. what an EXP team. Yeah, it's, I actually had this problem too in my more casual runs of like Iron Man's too. It's like Mei's leaving nothing on the table for anyone else. She just obliterates everything. Or she suffers from success by herself because her defense is so low. She just dies. Uh, um, her defense is not actually that low. When she promotes, she gets uh, 8 defense at base and oh, right. like 34 HP. And getting swords on promotion is actually a defense buff in a way. Because I mean, she's not she's not hurting herself anymore when she uh, oh true 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 faces the, an enemy on any face yeah no more tome HP spillage that's true that's true yeah and like a, for a long time this was seen as a bad thing because Celica has swords and that's a bad thing so surely May getting swords is a bad thing oh, May has so much but attack like <laughs> she skills everything yeah, with the she, sword anyway she, 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 yeah you just give her the blessed sword and she goes burr yeah I mean it's, I found it bad sometimes when the enemy has like so much more defense than Res right because then she doesn't one round anymore like she doesn't one round Fiend at close range, I believe, with the sword, right? A uh, blessed sword gives her uh, yeah, yeah, uh, bonus damage versus fiends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. That works. Okay, bad example. Um, it's the thing is, um, so the the big attack threshold that she wants to reach is twenty one attack before greed citadel. Um, I, I say want to reach. It's not like you're gonna be uh, super suffering if you don't reach it, but it lets you one round enemy merms. Uh, 24 attack and 16 speed. How likely is that? Well, a um, a 14-5 May or like a 14-4 May, which is a little generous, but whatever. 
uh, should reach uh, 24 attack with the Blessed Sword. Uh, she's usually not reaching the speed, though, which is the bigger issue. Um, this can sort of be amended with speed boosters if you are willing to use some from on side, but that depends on what you're doing on on side. So, I would say you cannot say she'll double the Merms on average, but it is like within reach, yeah, right? Like that's it. that was the phrasing you... I was just thinking of too. Like you can do it if you really want to. Yeah, well, not even if you really want to. Like it's it's being plus two. It's not that unlikely. She has a really good growth, right? Um, and, uh, like, if you don't do it, it's not like she sucks, you just plan your strategy accordingly. Um, you wouldn't, like, look at, uh, for instance, Har and say, oh no, he's short on defense, I guess I'll have to use a concoction instead of a vulnerary. <laughs> Harvey, like, he's going guess I'll die. <laughs> not, not yeah, defense. like, he's guess not I'll die, goodbye. <laughs> Like, you get what I'm saying, like, just because she's a little short of, like, the best case scenario benchmark doesn't make her necessarily much worse, it's just you need to adjust your strategy around it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, like, the, the best uh, threshold for her, it's being able to one round all the way there. Mm -hmm. But sh even without that, she'll, st she'll reach the attack threshold to one round a bunch of slower enemies. Uh, she gets Aura and Seraphim, which are insanely good spells. Um, Seraphim's especially nice just because it's really accurate, even if you're not fighting a fiend. Um, recover's a good, like, source of EXP for her. Uh, like, even when her combat EXP isn't as good, you can just have her tag with Jenny and just heal her whenever she uses Physic. That's just steady EXP every turn. So, like, yeah. even in a map where she's not Or in a not swamp, there's always something lot, to heal. improving. <laughs> True. I remember um, that. Remember the Blessed so, Sword also heals herself whenever you want to as well, which is also kind of funny. Uh, yeah, it's five per turn. Yeah, which is like, it's not a whole thing, but it's, it negates swamp damage, that's mm -hmm. what I remember. Anyway, um, I think so, their current ratings, I think, are based on um, kind of flunky-like utility. Like, I was just using them, spreading the XP mm -hmm. between them, and kind of getting through Act 2 and then using auto units instead long-term. Uh, but these strategies assume long-term use and like heavy investment into them as like Act 2 carries maybe going on to the later game as well to it's like, assist the it's others. Like, uh, it's like Act 2 carry, Act 3 carry, Act 4 support, and then in Duma Gate, they're one of your carries. Actually, if you're Mei, as like really fat magic, uh, like 14-8 Mei for instance, like if she gained a bunch of levels, uh, she can straight up one round witches with fire sometimes, <laughs> which is insanely funny. Now, granted, these are Thunder Witches, but you give her the Mage Ring, right? And she'll be able to run around them on enemy phase. Which oh, is yeah. really good, because there's a knowing bunch of Witches uh, in front of Doom's Gate. Oh yeah, I remember those, those group. And generally, like, hitting them in the forest with magic is also really nice, like, I suppose, if you want to do it on enemy phase. And it's, it's um, usually so... really annoying when they uh, when they just auto-equip fire on enemy phase when you want to use something else. But mm -hmm. if you have high enough tech, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, so what I usually do is I send her towards the fort, because you're going to want her to start from some people. Uh, but, uh, what you can do is you can like position her in such a way that she's in range of witches while going towards the fort. Mm. And then the witches in the forest you just take on with a different group, because she's not going to stick around long enough for them. <laughs> Works. So where She could handle them. them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd put them both in A+. I'd put them above Saber, personally. I haven't run with Super Saber. Maybe if I did, I'd change my mind. Mm -hmm. So when I say above, it's like, that's my personal leaning. But I would put them both, like, around the same, right? Like, if you ask me for a numerical rating rather than number rating, they'd both have, like, the same rating. They're Act 2 and 3 carries with some Act 4 utility. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, it's hard to argue a unit is, like, Better than one, but worse than the other, I guess, is what we'd say. Like, from what yeah, it sounds I, like, you I, prefer Mei over Bowie, and most people have heard I, do that. Yeah. But... Uh, so, I haven't talked about Bowie much. Uh, the thing about Bowie uh, that's nice is that he's actually more reliable than Mei if he reaches his benchmarks, because <laughs> he gets the uh, skill that boosts uh, 10, uh, 10 hit oh, yeah. for every magic. The Sage skill, I remember it. I just don't remember um, what it's called. He's not... Uh... Discipline? Yeah, I something say. like it. Something like it. Um, I, think, I think it's funny the way you worded that is like he's more reliable if he hits his benchmark. So like 30% of the time it works every time. Or maybe 50% <laughs> of the time yeah. it works every time. 
Uh, well, the thing is, hitting his benchmarks on average, uh, like long term, is reliable because you're looking at the average of a lot of levels. The the problem with Bowie is hitting his benchmarks on the short term because if he falls behind a little, he's gonna keep falling behind yeah, because the, the XP gain is gonna slow. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I do think that like that's hitting averages a... is like difficult sometimes to reliably do consistently because if you have a speed average you gotta hit and an attack average you gotta hit. Um, if you yeah. if you need both to be around fifty percent, let's say, and you miss, uh, there's like a fifty percent chance you get screwed in one, right, or roughly, let's say that it is. Then there's basically yeah, a um, seventy five percent chance you're gonna miss either. I guess is what I'd say. So you're rarely hitting both. Something like a, the the chance of being on your average is actually around sixty six percent, I believe, rather than like fifty fifty. It's the um, it's the average, but the chance of hitting an average is like two and three. Mm. Um, the the map behind that being more or less what's the chance of not being on average right and then that works out to I believe uh, one and three yeah anyways go ahead um, so the thing about um, about Bowie uh, that I also want to bring up is that um, because he lets you use Saber uh, as I mentioned in the Saber bit that also means your EXP management is less tight for your other units. Uh, in my LTC, I found it like insanely hard to do EXP management because Katri and Pala, neither of them were ready to promote by the end of Act 4, and I needed to give some EXP boosters to Dean, or by the end of Act 3, sorry. Um, so like that's that's a real advantage that you could argue makes putting up with his unreliability like worth it, because he makes it easier to do train other units, because May uses so much EXP. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. At least, I mean, I haven't done the XP management myself, but it sounds convincing to me, which is enough for, for right now. There's probably someone in the comments disagreeing, but that's fine. So, um, do you think Celica deserves to be up there? Because I believe she was also considered a carry at um, that point. I I believe she deserves to be in like A minus. I don't believe she deserves to be on the same level as them. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. Uh, one, you can't pick her deployment slot. So she's inherently slower on like a lot of maps just because she starts further away uh, oh, while yeah. having the same move as them. Warp moments. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, why else? Um, she has a worse early, early game, like early Act 2, uh, because using swords is good later on, but early on it just means she doesn't one round, so you need some help. Uh, like using Bowie and Mei to weaken enemies so they suicide into Salika. Um, in practice, she kind of makes up the turns later, though, because she's really good against um, Arcanists and the uh, Cantor, since she can use swords. Uh, versus Arcanists, the thing is, she can if you stand in a choke point, the Arcanist will go to you at two range, and this then the next one eat. will be forced. No, this is about uh, Arcanist boat. Oh, the boat. Yeah, right, right. Okay, go on. Yeah, if you stand in a choke point, the first one will attack you at two range, and the second one's going to be forced to attack at one range and suicide into Salika uh, if her attack is high enough. Is it, uh, which is, is it like that she won rounds? Um, I forget what the exact benchmark is. I believe it would be having something like 15 attack, which is kind of on the high side. Because uh, keep, keep in mind, she can use a, um, a steel sword, right? Yeah. So th that really helps her. In fact, uh, I actually uh, kept the enemy stats spreadsheet open, so let me check that for you real quick. I um, believe it's the fifth fire train. Okay, so the Arcanists have uh, 30 HP and Miasma. This means they effectively have 29 HP, but it doesn't really matter because you can't do half a damage. Yeah, you gotta right? double. And you're gonna double. So you need to do 15 damage, and they have 6 rest, so you need 21 attack. Uh, your highest sword is. I thought it was um, about defense. Because you're hitting with uh, your sword, right? I might have said I might have said res, but I'm on defense. Okay, good. Uh, they have seven defense, so you're looking at needing 22 attack to uh, to reach that, and you need uh, or your best sword is steel with plus four, so you're looking at um, 18 18 attack on Celica, and she has a base of eight with a 60 growth. If she reaches, say, level 10 for that, she should average uh, 14 attack-ish. 
And if you give her all of the um, all of the attack boost in uh, in the shrine, yeah, from the that first would be fight, seventeen yeah. attack. Hmm. Yeah, pretty good. So either a slightly higher level or getting a little lucky, and she can reach it. Hmm. Now, again, I don't want to base someone's entire rating off of. But what if they get lucky though? But if say twenty percent of the time. She can one round Arcanus at one range with a sword, while Bowie and May will 100% of the time not be able to do that. That is worth considering. And even on the on the chance that she does not one round uh, with a sword, um, like she's still chunking them for a lot of damage. Um, I will say, um, I said it's not going to happen. Technically, it can. Uh, May. Uh, May does um, three damage with fire, uh, or rather, she fires three might, and they only have one more res than attack. So technically, May can one round. That said, uh, she's gonna kill herself by using fire if uh, if you try to do that. Uh, and she, like, they both take pretty decent damage from the Arcanist. So I, I would say Salika is like slightly better here, since uh, she's taking similar. Um, similar damage uh, since she has less res but she doesn't hurt herself by casting uh, while she has slightly better HP mm -hmm. um, and it's also easier to reach the attack threshold because May would need uh, uh, May would need 19 attack uh, and she's at best like level 10 or 11 mm -hmm. and would you say this is a this carries over to the rest of their experiences as well like is this roughly how they stack up against each other because most enemy types um i'd say for most enemy types they're basically the same okay <laughs> uh like if you compare may and uh, selica uh, may has like plus one bases and selica has slightly better growths and better exp gain so selica's gonna have a level advantage over may mm. uh like a very significant level advantage like uh selica will easily be like if you're using her as your main carry she's easily gonna be like level 18 when she promotes and like level five or eight promoted by the end of the game which is the equivalent of gaining like 17 like 21 levels you're not gaining 21 levels on may no definitely not even if you use her full time like a carry like you said yeah and since she has really good growth that carries over so that's uh that's Selic as a carry uh, oh another disadvantage she has uh, is that uh, in turn wheeling, you can go with for riskier plays oh, with May right. and Bowie, because if they die, you just turn wheel. But if Salika dies, game over. <laughs> Big F reset for you. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I don't know if that really counts um, again because like the turn wheel almost presumes some level of rigging, but it's definitely annoying well, in practice. The thing is, the turn wheel does exist though. So if you yeah. see like a, a ten percent chance of that. You can go for that with May. Like, that's reliable-ish, right? Yeah. But with Celica, you just can't. Well, you can, but it's riskier. Yeah. This is 10% chance you have to play the whole thing over again, which is... Yeah, because, like... It's almost more quality of life that. than an actual, like, utility thing, I feel like. But, yeah. I guess so, yeah. But it, it is at least noteworthy. Like, you would take that into consideration when you made your decision of which character to use. Presumably, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that's Salika as a carry, as uh, your carry, and to be clear, I do think she's worse than them. Uh, but she, like, she's not that much worse. She even does better in some maps. Like, she's better on the Cantor boat because um, she can just go up to him at one range on the supply tile and smack him with the sword, while May and Bowie are hitting on Res. True. Um. So that's uh, that's uh, Salika. As an unused unit, though, like, as a flunky, she's still really good. She needs to reach level 5, no matter what, because you want a Seraphim user for Necro Dragon, uh, like, at the Seabound Shrine. And that's going to be Salika. Uh, it can't be May, because she gets it from the Seabound Shrine when she promotes. Um, and beyond that, uh, her priestess, or princess, rather, Bases are actually like insane. 13 attack, 12 speed, like 32 HP. Like she can take a hit from the fiends and Jetta swamp at base. <laughs> like that's insane. that's really good. Um, 
She can also one round the Silverlands ones if she's holding the sil the the um list the Grimoire Ring. Oh right, the the one that gives you plus five magic. Yeah. Oh um, while I'm thinking about it, uh, I will say, uh, all three of them reach the Jetta Killing threshold. They just do it to different spells. Uh, Celica has the most reliable Jetta kill for what it's worth, uh, because Ragnarok has the best accuracy out of the three spells used to kill Jetta. It's uh, Ragnarok. Uh, Aura and Sagitte. Oh, it's the one with Sagitte, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I remember. It's been a while. Cool. So sh she actually has the most reliable Jetta kill for what it's mm -hmm. worth. And yeah. it's, it's really funny to get their boss dialogue and then you get smacked in the face with drag. <laughs> I agree. I also think it's funny that Jetta is so slow you can double him with those spells because of the Draco Shield. He, he has zero AS. Yeah. So, so slow. Thank God. <laughs> Just need yeah, to just know um, how to count, and you'll be able to kill Jedi. Easy. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I guess I'm gonna like use an anecdote to illustrate my point about like how good I think Selica is as an invested unit. Even if she's not your main carry, just as an invested unit. Like, let's say you were doing Bowie plus Selica instead of Bowie plus Saber. I do think you should be doing Bowie plus Saber instead. But like, just for the sake of argument, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what I did in my Soyo. So, Bowie was my main mage, and uh, because, you know, it's a Soyo, I don't have that many units, I was, like, super investing in Celica. And uh, Celica, which was a few levels under Bowie, had better offensive stats than him, uh, despite not getting any stat boosters. <laughs> and then I looked her up on Oifibot, and she wasn't even above average. Let's go. Uh, by the end of the campaign... <laughs> Yeah, it's insane. By the end of the campaign, I think she had like 24 magic and like 20 speed. And she was like plus one on speed, I think. Like she just has really good stats. Like people really underrate them because either they don't use her, which is fair. Uh, she's not the best EXP target, but she's a good EXP target. Um, or because like they see her as frail, which she kind of is like she's she's not on, but she's still, like, able to take a couple hits, especially from mages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have the same experience. I also, it's the turn wheel thing as well. You want to keep her out of combat a lot of the time if you think it's risky. Like, if you're not yeah. doing every bit of math, it can be really scary to put Selic out there. So, True. I Although, I, I would it. say you should do the math. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're playing Fire Emblem, it, it's generally a good idea to do the math <laughs> before you attack. Um. Okay, uh, is there anyone we forgot? Um, yeah, so we have... Let me see. We have Atlas and Felbar and Conrad and Sonia left, I think, and I guess Noma okay. as well. So they either, I... like, we're, we've been going for a really long time, so it either be speed rounds or we can save them for another time. Okay, I'll do speed rounds, because that way it's nice and neat and in one video. I do like Valbar it. Valbar up to C. Uh, yeah. It's a... It's like kind funky of hard to argue right? whether he should... Yeah, sort of. Uh, like, in, in the Merc boat, he's insane, because he takes no damage. Uh, he can be used for body-blocking zombies on the Ar the Cantor boat. Uh, he can be used decently well on 3-1. Uh, there's uh, Valbar's epic duel against the Myrmidon in Great Citadel in the yeah. bottom right. <laughs> the desert guy. Uh, yeah, if you do this the Dean map instead of the Sonya map, he can choke the point really well on that map. Like, I think he lives a crit from Dean. And keep in mind, this is an enemy Dean that has, like, 20 attack. Um, if you give him a, 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 a shield. Um, he's just really good at, like, those very specific things. And while at the end of the day, like, he's not that great after that. Unless you do, like, pitchfork memes, but we're not counting that. Uh, like, that's very useful. I don't know if I'd put him above or below us. Uh, probably above. Uh, you can also do some shove stuff in the desert. Um, but I, I do think that makes them better than D tier, where one of them is like Conrad, who's around for two maps and is good for like one of them. Yeah. I was thinking he's, what he's described as kind of like sounds like Claire level utility, sort of. So like maybe around here somewhere. Yeah. We, we can Which, more accurately de determine it when we're doing these other units yeah. anyway. Uh, now, as for Atlas, the thing is, Atlas, like, had his kneecaps completely busted by Super Pala being demoted. Because mm -hmm. he promotes just super late in any run that is not Super Saber nowadays. Yeah, 
Because he, he joins at like level where you can promote him, but you're not anywhere near a shrine where you can promote him. Yeah. Now, let's pretend for the sake of argument that you do want to promote him um, and use him. I still think he's not that great because you need to get him from Archer to Sniper. And by the time he becomes a, like, a sniper, Leon's probably already a Bow Knight. <laughs> and you only have one Killer Bow. And the thing is, trading the Killer Bow is bad because that hurts your enemy phase. Yeah, it's like I mentioned earlier for Leon. It's like, sure, Haunter's Volley is really good, but you also want to fight at 1-2 range, 1-3 range, 1-4 range, 1-5 range on enemy phase a lot of the time. And uh, yeah. his speed is kind of bad. Like, really, really bad. Uh, yeah, um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Mage Atlas memes for <laughs> big rescue range. That's not efficient, but you know what? If you do it, more power to you. That's fair. Do you think it should move down from here? I like, think you should. Um, like, like, his best utility is, like, shooting a witch in Doomagate damn. in the Avertron. Poor guy. What is my purpose? Shooting a single witch in Doomagate. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, no. you get a silver bow for free, so you can have him use it, and then he two shots a witch with kind of shaky hit rates. Mm -hmm. That's fair. So maybe, like, around where Est is? Like, like low or, like, D tier? Like, actual D tier? Uh, personally, I put him in D tier, but I guess, like, Invested Atlas is... He's still a sniper, and I don't want to be too strict. I would personally accept C, though I personally put him in D, like mm -hmm. as the patented Latias rating. Okay, he's staying where he is then. <laughs> I like Atlas. <laughs> yep. It's it's also like, like you said, it's it's not a strictly LTC tier list. It's not a strict efficiency. Oh, it is an efficiency tier list, but there's still. If you did invest in Atlas, there's still like a pretty positive outcome in like a Hunter's Volley bot if you just can't enemy face like spam. But he's still a good yeah, player face move. Um, yeah, and he's gonna have really high attack, which like that's really nice to bust through some of the the tougher enemies. Like, um, I guess that is one thing that he does have over Leon. Leon's strength kind of shaky. There's some enemies that I'll need to double crit, while Atlas would get away with just a single crit. Yeah, if I recall, Atlas also has like enormous HP to the point. Like once he's been raised, he has more bulk. Leon, he gets by because you invest into him a lot, and then he also just has a really good class, but his personal stats just aren't all that great. Atlas's stats are more lopsided, but at least he does have like really good HP and attack. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. some right to that. Um, you'll, you'll just get doubled by some like cringy stuff though that Leon would avoid getting double by though in, the, in his defense. Yeah. So, uh, as for Conrad, Sonia, and Nama, I wouldn't really move any of them. If I had to, like, speed round them, Sonia is, like, not actually that bad if you use her. She's just not that good either, is the issue. She will one round on average, because she's actually really close to it at base. She's, like, one attack off from one round the generic calves uh, from the map taunts. Like, doing 13 times 2 with Excalibur. <laughs> but she's never going to be as good as a main mage, and she's never going to be as good as Dean Eater. And while I don't want to count the recruitment cost, like at the end of the day, she she just like joins a little too late to actually promote and you know be used long term without slowing down. I agree. The payoff isn't really there for me with uh, with Sonya. I also think she has really bad unit feel, which isn't helping either in that regard. She just, yeah, it's so hard to get her up there. It feels not worth whenever whatever every time you do mm -hmm. it. The only part that makes it worth it, I think, is putting the red tricorn hat on her. That's about it. True. Um, then Conrad and Noma. Uh, Conrad is really good in Doom's Gate uh, because he has actually really high res, and his attack is decent at base, so he can kill a few witches. Like he's really good at that. Uh, and then uh, Noma, like unironically, his best utility is that he can Sagittate Jetta to take away his shield in Jetta Swamp. Yeah, I do actually really like trading, trading around to Matering between all the different magical units you have at that point. Mm -hmm. And Noma just does it for free. With like also the ability to heal or something like that in emergencies. Yeah, although it's only recover and his magic isn't that high. No, it's, it's um, not great, but you know, you have and, units losing HP all the time. So there's something for him to do always. Yeah. And uh, then I'll point out, I actually made a list of like who I personally bring to the tower. And this is like to tie into my um, like why I actually kind of really like Conrad, even though I wouldn't move him from D tier because of availability. Uh, when you look at a tower list in like an efficient setting, you're not necessarily low manning. You're using too many units for me to consider it a true low man, but you're also not using that um, that many. Like you have ten slots, right? So who are you bringing? You're bringing Salica, 
You're bringing your main mage, whether that's Mayor Bowie. You're bringing your Dreadfighter, whether that's Saber or uh, Dean. And uh, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention, but in a Saber run, you would still promote your mage to, uh, to Tier 2. Because they are still your carry for Act 2. It's just they get less investment in Act 3, and they don't get the EXP boosters. So you'd still get them to the point where they can promote for Act 4. Mm -hmm. Because you'll need them for your Jetta Killer. So when I say like Dreadfighter, like let's say um, let's say Saber is your carry, you would still bring your main mage to the tower because you're still training them. You're just not super investing. Mm -hmm. um, then you bring Leon, obviously. You bring Jenny, need a healer, uh, and Saffron's really good. You're gonna bring your two Falcon Knights because there's a bunch of terrors and they're probably like your six and seven best units. Yeah, like who and, else are you bringing? Right? Like, yeah. like, yeah, who else are you bringing? Like, I guess yeah. you might have like, invested into Atlas, but you get ten slots, right? So yeah, you still have so much Even room if you invest to bring into Atlas. Yeah. You saw, yeah, yeah, you saw room for Conrad and Noma. <laughs> uh, which funny. they they, <laughs> they just get in because there's no competition yeah. for like tower slots. Like this isn't Talius. For utility slots, you can just slots, bring yeah. everyone. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, I like the logic. That's fair. I hate Conrad, to be honest, but yeah, that's fair. I, I don't really like his story role, but I do like his personality. I know this is like a gameplay tier list, but like, you know what? I like the soft boy vibes. He's kind of cute. I like him. I just wish he wasn't like constantly saving Celica. I mean, you gotta admit this game does need a couple more damsels in distress sometimes. It's it's really neat. Uh, tr True. You gotta hit Man. that quote him. <laughs> <laughs> They've got like five that are in prison, and then they also have to make Salika need to be saved like four times. It's of course. actually kind of silly. Of course, I mean, they gotta have something for Conrad to do. That's his thing. Anyway, all right. I think that's all the, uh, the Salika side units that we've done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, all right. it looks like it. All right, and we'll, we'll see next time how the all the units stack up, because then we're going to get into Villager meta and... Uh, Villager Archer being bad, probably. Zeke stuff. Oh, a Clive Matilda stuff. Looking forward to that, too. That's gonna be fun. You know... Claire stuff. <laughs> recently, I've recently I've kind of backed up from it, but I, I will give the hot take I used to have, which is that 0% uh, Groats Clive is better than Groats Matilda in an efficiency setting. Ooh, calm down with the spice. I still actually, gotta eat. Actually, you know what? I, you know what? I still stand by that. Actually, <laughs> if you're specifically talking efficiency. <laughs> okay, fair enough. We'll see that next time. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. See ya.